What's up guys, it's Rogue to here and welcome back to yet another amazing video on the channel. For today I got an updated version of my Invoked Dot deck. If you've been looking at Yu-Gi-Oh recently, you would have seen that the ban list came out a few days ago and gave this deck a massive boost. So here is the profile for you guys. It should be coming out on the exact day that the ban list is sort of eligible to be played. So, um, you know, you're welcome guys. And if you do enjoy this, enjoy this type of content, make sure you do leave a like and a comment down below. What deck are you playing post this ban list? I really do want to know. Leave a comment down below and subscribe down there. I promise you it is free. And without any further ado, let's get straight into the deck profile. All right guys, so starting off with the main deck here, we have Triple Alistair, the Invoker. This is a Invoke deck, of course, we're gonna play Triple on him. He is the heart and soul of the deck. Not only does he get you access to the Invocation, but also provides additional protection for your Winder because you can give a thousand attack during the damage step. Accompanying him, we have arguably one of the best cards in the deck, the Magical Meltdown. Just the fact that it searches your Alistair, and also that it makes that your opponent cannot negate your fusion summons or respond to the effects of monsters that were fusion summoned makes everything sort of like a spell speed four and really unfair we of course accompany this with the terraforming which is our fourth copy of magical meltdown and then to round off the engine we have the two invocations now i see people play one i think they're really really brave in a format where dd crow is prominent if they banish the invocation before you can actually get it back into rotation that's your entire invoked engine just completely shut off so i feel like even though seeing two invocation in your hand is not optimal i feel like you do need to play two so that is it for the invoked aspect of the deck we'll now move on to the branded fusion aspect so we've got the one form of albaz accompanied with the three branded fusion this is still an insane combo if you have branded fusion invocation in your hand and i like this card you can actually get access to your alistair without actually hard drawing alistair so it's just another way to get into your invoked engine and of course this gives you uh, non-targeting banishes and gets your dogmatica engine online as well by sending from the extra deck to the graveyard so i feel like this engine is still really good and the one form of albaz is recommended i don't recommend playing more because he is a very very bad brick moving on to our third engine here we have the dpe engine now this engine is the one that saw the boost because now we have triple fusion destiny instead of just the two. This makes it sort of a bit better considering you're playing the two bricks as well. So now you have the three power cards for the two bricks. And I still feel like DPE, even though it's not that good in the tier limit matchup, it will trigger their effects. I feel like Celestial is good enough on its own to play because it does get you that draw two as follow up as well. And fusion destiny is an insane card that doesn't really conflict with your invoked or branded fusion engines. And for the fourth and final engine here, we're playing the Dogmatica engine, so we're rocking double Ecclesia. I cut it down from the last video, which was at three, just because we gained the extra Nadir Servant. So I feel like since it can grab back from the graveyard as well, just playing the two Ecclesia is fine. We're accompanying it with the one Fleur and the one Maximus. I'm still pretty much playing this package. I still think Maximus is extremely good and Fleur Lily is very, very good in certain situations. Accompany this with the triple Nadir Servant. I'd rather see the Nadir Servant than the Ecclesia. Hence why I'm playing three of this and two of the Ecclesia. And it just gives you access to your Shadol Schism as well, which gives you the Winder Plays, which helps you win the game. For all the hand traps, and there are a lot of them, so bear with me. We have Triple Ash. I still think this is one of those generic hand traps to hit any deck. Doesn't matter the deck you're against, Ash will have some sort of impact against it. We are going with the two Bell as well. Tier Limits are very prominent still. I think they are the best deck. They are the tier zero deck of the format and Bell does help combat that a little bit. We're playing double Ogre, Sprites will still be around, and this is still very good against the gigantic Sprite. Ogre them and they won't be able to get their effect. We have double Crow, again, this is just to combat tier limits a bit more as well. It's very versatile, can hit a bunch of different decks as well with this. And of course, we're running the triple Infinite Impermanence, as it's probably the best going second hand trap you can have, since it just sort of forces the negate or your opponent loses the negate. And for the last two flex spots of the deck, this can be Pot of Prosperity. I just prefer playing the double, triple tactics talent. Punishes your opponent for hand trapping you and playing the game. And it's two banned cards and a change of heart. So really, really nice. That is the main deck. It is 40 cards. I'll now be moving on to the extra deck. Moving on to the extra deck here, we have the only links that we play are the Secure Gardener with the Almirage. We play Almirage because you can normal summon Alistair get invocation, turn it into Almirage, which then turns it into a secure gardener, which gives you your light target, 
Also, this leaves a extra deck loss in the graveyard for Maximus. If you're not playing Maximus, you can just play the Magistus Artemis instead of these two, and you can save one extra deck space instead. But if you are playing Maximus like me, you sort of need to play these two. We also have double Mechaba and the one Agoides. I see people playing one Mechaba. I don't think that's correct, because if they out your Mechaba, it sort of fuels for the next one since it is a light itself. So I feel like there's a purpose in playing a second. If they out the one, you already have your light target to make the second. And then if they out the second, you can usually make Agoides as well. So they all sort of fuel each other in a way. And Agoides is a very underrated card that helps you get over those really, really big monsters as well. So I feel like this invoked package is pretty much perfect. If I had the extra space, would I play Raijin? Potentially, I'd have to test it out, but these three for now are perfect. For the branded stuff here, we have the Ice Jade Dragon Mirror Jade, we have Lubelion, we have Alba Len Lenitus, I believe is how you pronounce it, and we also have the Ash Dragon. So these two are just, you know, gets your Dogmatic Engine, gets you a Fusion Spell, and these two are you actually need to sort of get the Disruption in the Engine, you'll make this, and then that'll give you access to your Mirror Jade. So I feel like it's all very self-explanatory, and yeah, very clear cut. Moving on to the Shadow package, we have the one Construct, the one Act Cologne, and the one Winder. The Act Cologne will give you access to the to the Winder by getting you the Schism. If you can afford to send it to the Graveyard, you can go with Maximus and the Construct instead, and then you can get back the Schism, and then you can of course make Winder during your opponent's turn and watch them cry. And for the last three cards in the extra deck, we have one DPE. I still think this card is pretty good in the grind game, really good against trap decks as it will enable you to out resource them because you'll be popping a card every single turn. We have the Elder Entity Entis as well, just a free pop one when it's sent to the graveyard. And we have the Psy Frame Lord Omega, which gives you further disruption in the graveyard. You can also, since you are playing the Omega and the Entis already, you can play Ultimate Slayer instead of the Triple Tactics. I just think that the Triple Tactics is a bit more versatile if you do get hand trapped. So that is the end of the deck profile guys, I hope you guys did enjoy the updated Invoke deck. I do think this deck has a lot of potential this meta, it just takes the right pilot which could be you and make sure that you do represent us Invoked players. So without any further ado, I'll catch you in the next video, thank you for watching.